In this video, let's go ahead and learn about the unique constraint. The unique constraint allows us to have unique values for a given column. So what I want to do first is give you the reason why we have to use unique constraint. And then I'm going to show you how to actually apply the constraint. So let's go ahead and select and then pretty much just say email. And then let's count star from and then person. Now let's go ahead and group by and then email. And then if I press enter, you can see that we do get the actual email plus the count. So this is actually grouping by the actual email. And right here, you can see that we have 292 emails, which are no. So now I'm actually interested to see whether we have duplicate emails. So I'm going to say having and then count and then star bigger than one, right? So if I press enter, and as you can see, we got 292 emails, which are no. So now what I want to do actually is if I open up VS code and let's grab this insert right here. And instead of Alfredo, let's go ahead and change the name to Fernanda and then grab this command C and then go back to PSQL, paste that. And you can see that the insert did work. So now let's go ahead and run the same command. So we're going to group by the actual email having count bigger than one, press enter. And now you can see that we have a duplicate email, right? And in fact, if I go ahead and pretty much perform my select, so select and then start from person where, where in an email equals to and then paste that in semicolon. And you can see that right here we have two females. So we have Alfreda and we also have Fernanda. Now let's say that we want to send an email to Alfreda. So this Alfreda right here. So we would have a problem, right? Because both Fernanda and Alfreda have the same email. So we don't know exactly to which person the actual email belongs. And this is when the unique constraint comes into play. So unique constraint allows us to have a unique value per column. And it's not the same as the primary key because primary keys are used to identify a unique row in a table. And having an unique constraint, it simply means that you can only have unique values per column. So this column right here called email, should only have unique values, i.e. we should never get into the scenario where we have two people with the same email. So to add the actual constraint is very simple. So if I clear the screen and let's go ahead and try to add the constraint first. So to add a constraint, you simply have to alter the actual table. So table and then person, and then we can say add and then constraint. And we have to give it a name. So let's go ahead and say unique and then email address and then simply say unique. So this is the actual keyword. Now, inside of parentheses, you could actually pass multiple columns to be unique. And this allows you to have a set of values which are unique per table. But in our case, we simply want the email to be unique. So if we go ahead and try to add the email, so email and then semicolon, if I press enter, you can see that we get an error and it says that could not create unique index, unique email address. So this is the actual name that we have given it. And the reason why it can't create is because it found that this email right here is duplicated. And in fact, if you remember correctly, if I go ahead and select everyone with that email, you can see that we have two people with the same email. And to fix this, we could actually do two things. One, we can pretty much just get rid of this person right here. So Fernanda right here, or we could actually change the actual email. So this email right here to something else or even make it nullable. But I'm going to show you exactly how to perform delete updates properly in the next chapter. 
But for now, let's go ahead and simply delete this person right here called Fernanda. So to delete, simply type delete and then from person and then simply say where ID equals to and then Fernanda's unique identifier is this one right here, which is 1004. So 1004 and then semicolon and that was deleted. Now, if I go ahead and try and select everyone with that same email, we should only get Alfreda. Now let's go ahead and press up a couple of times. So we want to add the actual index. So right here. So now we can go ahead and add the actual index. So alter table person, add constraint, and then the actual name and then unique right here. So this is the keyword. And then we're simply saying that we want the email to be unique. If I press enter, you can see that that now works. And now if I go ahead and clear the screen first and then press backslash D and then person, you can see that we have this unique constraint right here that we've just created. And the name is unique email address. Now let's go ahead and try to add the same person that we did. So Fernanda with that same email. So let's go ahead and press up a couple of times and see if we can find Fernanda. So I think this was Fernanda. Yeah. So this is Fernanda. If I press enter, you can see that the actual answer now fails, which means that our table is behaving well according to the given constraint that we've just given it. And finally, let me go ahead and drop this constraint right here that we've just created. And I want to show you a different way of creating this. So let's go ahead and say alter and then table and then the actual table name. So this is person and then drop and then constraint and then the actual name. So unique email address, semicolon, enter. You can see that that's gone. If I press backslash D and then person, you can see that the actual constraint is gone. Now, the other way of adding a constraint is simply by saying alter and then table and then person and then add. And you can simply say unique and then pass the actual column name. So email. Now, the difference between this way and the previous way is that now we let the constraint name be defined by Postgres. If I press enter, you can see that works. Now, if I press backslash D and then person enter, you can see that we have this constraint called person email and then key. And then it's a unique constraint on email. If you have any questions on using unique constraints, drop me a message. But as I said, unique constraints allows us to have a unique value per column. It's not the same as the primary key because primary keys job is to identify a record in a table. This is all for now. Join me in the next video.